The technology developed very quickly, so your thoughts once set or written may become out of date. Do you revise your ideas when the technology becomes obsolete or trend changes? Things change uh, because uh, probably new challenges come out from, from the business, uh, the, the, the buzzword of, the, of these days, digital transformation that is so common in consulting companies because they see that as a way to sell services and from the side of large manufacturing utilities, uh, industry companies, uh, it's, uh, it's an excuse uh, uh, to, yes, to renew and to try to improve uh, their processes. But digital transformation is, uh, is, a, is, is a very dangerous thing in the sense that it's necessary on one hand, but on the other hand it's so intrusive uh, in, in, in how a company lives and thrives and, 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 and does business. And uh, you, you start with an idea, usually uh, you plan a number of things that can be done and should be done, and then when you physically move to do those things, uh, you realize that it's deeper, that the impact is much deeper than you expected. And, and, and probably the technology that you developed or you were relying on are no longer uh, ideal, so you change, and if nothing exists that can suit your needs, you probably create new technologies. In this regard, uh, the, I always like to make the example of Facebook. Uh, when Facebook started about a decade ago, they were essentially a PHP website with MySQL in the back end, but when they grew up, and the number of users skyrocketed to uh, hundreds of thousands and then millions of users and then tens of million users. Uh, can you imagine what it means to update the indexes of a relational table with those numbers? And the frequency of reads and writes, especially on a database, it's total nonsense. So they had to invent something else to be able to manage the, that crazy mass of users. And they looked around and nothing was there, or maybe there was something like maybe Cassandra that could possibly work, but not exactly the way they, 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 they wanted. So they customized the Cassandra, or think of Stack Overflow. Uh, they needed to have a lot of caching, and so, but there was the Redis cache uh, uh, out there, but they, yeah, they, they wanted to customize it to make it suit their own needs. Uh, so sometimes, you know, you have to find a way uh, maybe changing the, the, de the technology. If I look back, uh, I, I don't see that many things uh, uh, that really uh, happening in the world that forced the change of technology different from uh, the fact that you, you don't have the tools uh, for what you want to do uh, and then you have to invent those tools. In addition to that, there is also the innate nature uh, of developers to always looking for new things, uh, or maybe to, to, to squeeze the bite, in, to split the bite in four uh, smaller pieces to increase the performance, to try this, try that, and sometimes out of many different attempts, something that is really useful comes out and why not using that? So it's, it's a combination of factors, but mostly in my opinion uh, driven by the need of digitalizing everything and because this is, uh, we are not simply talking about, you know, uh, putting some uh, uh, computers in front of users. It's now a different stage. We are deep inside the process of changing things from the inside, uh, making them uh, digital and uh, software based. And this means changing a lot of things under the hood. So it's a much problematic, much more problematic than we think. And sometimes the tools are not appropriate. Dina, in your opinion, what were Microsoft's the worst and the best technological decisions for the last 15 years? I think that uh, the decision of uh, uh, opening the source code, uh, that, was, um, that was, uh, was a key decision. Honestly, I don't know if, uh, if it was a, a decision made uh, on the wings uh, uh, of you know making Microsoft look like uh, a friend company because you know some ten years ago Microsoft was not having a, uh, a strong reputation in the industry and this has all of a sudden changed more or less across the switch from uh, um, Steve Ballmer to uh, to Satya to Satya Nadella but the, the 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 story about open source was older and I I, I can I, I definitely remember Scott Guthrie my old friend Scott Guthrie, to be always have been a guy who promoted 
the open source Microsoft initiatives. I think that today, years later, that, that proved to be a, a good, very good decision for Microsoft because uh, it helped significantly uh, opening uh, horizons and uh, uh, summed up to the decision of going into the cloud uh, without, uh, you know, a, an open world uh, as a cloud vendor, you can hardly make the crazy amounts of money you want to make. So, uh, whether it was the first step of a longer path or it was just a, a decision that turned out to be right for the business developed on the cloud, that, that step uh, definitely helped Microsoft significantly in gaining a new uh, and fresher uh, reputation and making more money. You wrote a lot of articles for your blog about ISP.NET Core in Simple Talk, and you are author of Programming ISP.NET Core book. What can you advise to the teams that want to migrate from ISP.NET to ISP.NET Core? Uh, first and foremost, uh, I believe that uh, uh, now is the time, uh, so the technology is ready enough for, for, for seriously considering uh, uh, ISP.NET Core for Greenfield or for uh, rewrites, significant rewrites uh, uh, of projects. Uh, uh, to be honest, uh, it was not my opinion for the past uh, year, year and a half. This said, uh, I'm currently involved in the rewrite of a project in uh, SP.NET Core. And uh, while uh, most of the skills the team has, uh, the things that we know from uh, SP.NET MVC programming classic, uh, are, more, are nearly the same. So we, 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 there's nothing that is really new, or very few things are, are completely new conceptual in terms of concepts. But the way in which we do a number of things is different. Now, the, 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 the areas that have breaking, in, of course, that have breaking changes are maybe three or four, no more than that. But even in the areas in which the, 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 the breaking changes are minimal, for example, the way in which you build a view, yet in core there are new things that if properly leveraged, and I'm thinking about in, about in particular of tag helpers, uh, can make the quality of code, the readability of code, the, 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 the speed at which you can write that code much faster and much better. So it's like rewriting an application from the grounds up. So it's very good, uh, it's a good timing. If you still have plans to make a significant refactoring, restructuring, uh, uh, at least of you know, the front end of the application, because I mean, if you have, not necessarily you have to change uh, the back end UI less code, but for the, 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 the Upper layers of code presentation and maybe application application layers. Uh, yes, it, it's it's definitely a good time. It's not free in the sense that uh, even you know the the, the, the skilled developers need to be every, everyone needs to be retrained in a way or maybe it can be a self training. But you know there is a learning curve for nearly everybody. Uh, but is uh, probably the way to go because you know. It's, it's, it will be the, the way of doing web applications for the, probably the next 10, at least 10 years uh, to come. And how to sell such migration to the customer? This reminds me of, the, uh, of uh, something happening uh, in a different segment of the industry, but still software related. Let me mention blockchain, okay? So blockchain is uh, something I pers that I personally don't understand. And I'm, say, I'm not saying it's, uh, it's wrong or it's not working. I just don't understand the point of that. To me, it's simply a very slow distributed database. So all the points, uh, the benefits, uh, distributed ledger, this, 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 and that I read, I'm not able. It could be just me. I mean, I'm not saying it's wrong. It could be simply me. But nobody so far has been able to show me the a real business case for blockchain. But one. This one said... To me, blockchain is uh, the buzzword that a lot of uh, CTOs, uh, CIOs use to sell to the CEO the refresh of the rewrite, the refresh of their legacy systems. So it's just a buzzword used because it's cool to justify investing money to sell changes to, to customers even internal uh, customers like you know, the, 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 the people in the company that holds the, the, the purse's string. So in ASP.NET Core, I think we have a, a 
that there is no buzzword like blockchain okay that can help in this regard but we face the same problem so honestly i think that uh, uh, it's uh, it's uh, not going to be successful uh, selling uh, the technology upgrade but the technology upgrade can be sold to customers uh, under the surface of uh, domain specific uh, or feature oriented new uh, software aspects so we can make your system uh, more uh, collaborative more responsive uh, uh, more scalable more this more that so use uh, uh, industry spe domain specific arguments uh, to justify the improvement and under the hood change the technology. What software development trends do you like and maybe dislike the most? I'm very skeptical about uh, about uh, all the companies, uh, consultants, uh, even developers uh, that speak about artificial intelligence. And, and, and okay, artificial intelligence is an umbrella term for your machine learning. An if statement is a form of artificial intelligence. Okay, so I, I, I think that machine learning is uh, too serious a thing to talk about, and uh, because at the same time, uh, an if is, an is a form of artificial intelligence. It's so easy for everyone to sell himself or herself as a expert, maybe a consultant, a top level consultant on, on this kind of things. Um, let me give you an example. If you buy a, a recent car you might find out that the re very recent car no oh you know expensive cars maybe are able to use brakes uh, nearly by themselves i'm not talking about self driving cars i'm just in, i'm talking about regular cars so you stop and if you push the 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 the, the, the brake uh, pedal too much the car automatically stops as if the, the, it was uh, um, it was parked this is an if the, the pressure on the pedal is strong enough do this and the do this comprehends a number of internal actions to change the state of the car they sell it as artificial intelligence it's simply logic algorithmic logic yet this simply okay let's call it stupid stupidly simple thing stupidly simple if changes the quality of your life as a driver because yeah, you, yeah, you stop and the car understands what you have done and reacts. Now, is this artificial intelligence or is this machine learning or, or is just uh, code? Machine learning is something more serious in the sense that is uh, taking numbers, numbers, time series, mostly time series, and figuring out patterns. It's data science. That is where there is a lot to do, but it's something that takes years to produce relevant numbers. Um, one of my customers now is an energy company. Uh, they sell software for um, uh, monitoring uh, power plants, uh, primarily power plants uh, uh, based on uh, renewable uh, sources, so wind farms, primarily wind farms. So let's say turbines. Now, a turbine produces uh, million signals per year time series every 10 seconds every five seconds in some cases and uh, there are softwares that can predict realistically when a turbine is going to be broken so they can advise you on what is the best or what is the recommended day to plan maintenance and uh, now maintenance uh, is uh, wow it's a whole world uh, of a mess because uh, it involves uh, the state of the device involves uh, the weather conditions because the turbine is not in an office or in a box but lives on the top may live on the top of a mountain uh, involves uh, uh, scheduling of people and, and work shifts vacations, uh, health conditions. So there are a number of factors. It also involves the cost of producing energy and the price of energy in a certain amount of time. All this produces numbers, numbers, numbers that must be crunched and a human cannot do that. 
So this is a space for machine learning. But there's another example, Polis, uh, Europol. Is, uh, there was a, uh, an article I read recently from one of the managers of the Europol. They says, we receive such a crazy amount of uh, records and, and news and, 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 and information about people from all over the world that without computers we cannot have a single chance to be able to, to, to make sense of facts. So artificial intelligence is something very, very, very serious that takes expertise, uh, knowledge, vision, knowledge of the business uh, and cannot be invented. Um, I, I know a couple of com companies that in the specific industry of renewables uh, are producing uh, software for this, but they have been working only on that for about 10 years. <laughs>